Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to take a look at this absolute monstrosity of spaceship that is the Aegis Reclaimer, built to shred, devour and feast upon the corpses of all derelict spaceships found throughout the verse. Despite being in game for a few years, this ship really hasn't had any purpose as we've been waiting for the salvage gameplay and with 318 on the horizon, this ship will now have a purpose and be able to scrape the holes of any derelict ships you find in and around the verse, allowing you, the player, to start making money from this machine. Obviously, to maximise its potential, you are going to want to crew this. It is an absolute monster, and I think running solo, although doable, will be extremely tedious. Um, not saying it's impossible, but it is definitely something you would more than likely wish to take your friends on board and go make that cash monies via scraping the corpses that you find in and around the verse. So once you initially get over the sheer size of this ship, there are some features on board that, although they're not available to us right now in the game, during the game's future development, this ship will have more features than just hull scraping. It has a drone bay, it has a dedicated deck to scrapping and tearing apart metal it has tractor beams it's got that huge grabbing claw to clip and clamp onto broken shells of ships while you devour it with your tractor beams and your laser cutters and it has various tools to cut its way through most things um, so it's definitely going to have future potential and it is definitely going to be a good time for you and your friends in the future making a fortune off the capabilities of this ship a dedicated salvage and reclamation platform, the Reclaimer is the perfect ship for venturing into the verse in search of riches and secrets. Whether you're churning debris fields for raw ore or searching for lost artifacts, the Reclaimer is built for utility. The life of a salvager can be tough, but with the technology like the Reclaimer behind you, it can be a profitable way to make your living among the stars. Aegis has built the perfect ship for those who want to write their own Star Citizen story. Equipped with a massive multi-tool arm, the Reclaimer can grab Spaceborne Salvage and then carry it aboard for processing. In addition to a large cargo hold, the hull is packed with reclamation equipment capable of processing and storing up to a constellation worth of salvage. The Reclaimer's turrets are multi-use hardpoints which can be mounted with defensive guns, missile batteries, additional tractor beams, floodlights, scanners or other salvage specific options. The ship carries an array of surveyor class drones for seeking out valuable items in the distant depths. Additionally, it includes a manned cutter which can be deployed for EVA recovery operations. The Aegis Reclaimer is an industrial salvage ship equipped with a reinforced cargo bay, a long range jump drive and launch pods for unmanned drones. The Reclaimer is an ideal ship for taking advantage of deep space wrecks. Tractor beams, floodlights, scanner options and docking ports round out the tools on this capable utilitarian spacecraft. Features Massive multi-tool arm Equipped with a multi-tool arm that dwarfs many ships, the Reclaimer can grab spaceborne salvage and then carry it aboard for processing. All in one. In addition to a large cargo hold, the hull is packed with reclamation equipment capable of processing and storing up to a constellation worth of salvage. Equipment. With an array of tractor beams, floodlights and scanners, a multitude of other equipment, you have a wide range of salvage specific options. Drones. The ship carries an array of surveyor class drones for seeking out valuable items. Manned cutter. If you need to personally get up close, the Reclaimer also includes a manned cutter which can be deployed for EVA recovery operations. Defense. The Reclaimer's turrets are multi-use hardpoints which can be mounted with defensive guns or missile batteries. Crew size. 4 to 5. Cargo 180 SCU. Cost 15,126,400 Alpha UAC. So quite a pricey ship in game. Length 155 meters, beam 118, height 50 meters, combat speed 76 meters per second, maximum speed 932 meters per second, mass 9,757,854 kilograms. So quite a chunky monkey. Avionics and systems. 
This ship comes equipped with the following. One size 4 radar. Three size 2 computers. One size 4 power plant. Three size 3 coolers. And three size 3 shield generators. This thing is built like a tank and is a purely defensive ship with its firepower and those large shields. The Reclaimer on paper certainly has a lot going for it features wise and I hope that CIG do follow through and make this a uh, make these features come to fruition because I feel a small org or even a medium org running two of these are going to have a good time maybe with a couple of escorts deep in pyro and beyond salvaging various ships or valuable items that you find in and around the verse. Um, maybe buying that information from data runners who have been out in the verse stumbled across maybe a javelin wreck or a mercury star runner wreck and these two giant reclaimers come down with your small fleet of escorts and destroy it gobble it all up and sell it for profit i do think there is some good times to be had with the salvage gameplay in the future and i do think that this ship really will come into its own if those features do come to fruition. With the drones, it's the same thing with the with the Carrick and its modularity. Um, I think drones will be a big part of the game. It's going to be very complex how they incorporate that into gameplay. But fingers crossed that it does all come true because I really do feel like this ship will be um, a cornerstone of salvage gameplay for medium and small orgs alike. Although this ship is obviously packed with future potential and numerous features that are almost certainly going to come into play and help us make money in the future, there's an aspect to this ship for me personally that I thoroughly enjoy. For me, this is almost certainly one of the best sci-fi ships to put into context that I, I really bond with. And that is being a generation uh, of predator movies and alien growing up with those franchises especially the alien now i'm almost certain i'm not the first person to make this reference this ship has a character to it that i enjoy it terrifies me when i'm on board this ship solo when you're out in the black and you're on this ship by yourself you cannot but help to look out, look over your shoulder in fear that you're about to get ambushed and gobbled by a xenomorph that for me is worth more than some of the features. Uh, too many times um, people have said, well, what does this ship do? What will I get for it? Sometimes it's about what a ship makes you feel. For me personally, I love the sci-fi sinister undertones that I get from this ship when I'm on board. It adds an element of immersion that I don't get with many other ships. Um, it makes me feel on edge <laughs> and I like that feeling it really does have its own character and that is something that makes this ship special that and the fact that it's terrifying also just looking from the exterior this ship would be right at home in an aliens franchise you know it would and that's why I like it it's very cool it's extremely large features aside character and just pure personality that this ship has I will almost certainly have one in my fleet in the future. Will I pay for one with real money? Probably not. I'll wait for the features to come online and then I would ideally, four to five crew shouldn't be too expensive to run with an NPC crew. Um, so that's my sort of theory with this ship at the moment. But what do you guys think? Um, do you own this ship? How would you crew it? Are you going to use it in an org? Are you looking forward to the features coming online or is this a sit and wait ship for you guys? Because I'm interested. What do you think about the internals as well? Because like I said, they are terrifying to me. Speaking of internals, we will now jump into the interior of this ship and we'll kick things off with the cargo area. As you can see, it's fairly large. With steel girders, ambient lighting and of course that elegant steam leaking through the vents, which I always enjoy. I do think it adds to the sense of immersion of this ship. So this area of the Reclaimer will hold 180 SCU worth of cargo. Personally, I would fill this up with all things logistical, medical supplies, food, water, ammunition, all that good stuff. Um, there are dedicated areas of the ship for your salvage, um, so that's how I would fill this hold. Moving to the deck above, we have the salvage hold. So this is where you're going to store all of your profitable salvage in this long dark creepy area of the ship um, it's very long um, 
So you are going to be able to store your profit along with SEU cargo. Again, I would use logistics and the cargo because we have this dedicated area here um, for holding all of your salvage, which is a nice touch and it is a floor above the cargo hold. So this particular area of the ship here, this is where you will receive your processed salvage from the deck above, which is the salvage processing deck. Any material you acquire will be put into SU crates and then dropped down that ramp onto the salvage hold deck and then you can then stack that SU into neat boxes to drop off for your profit. So you'll be out in the verse looking for your next large payday in the monstrosity that is the reclaimer and you might happen upon a derrick ship of varying sizes and shapes here you can see it's stripping the a2 and makes the a2 look puny in comparison so you'll collect and gather your materials via entering one of these um, operator seats which allows you to do the hull scraping you'll enter the turret and then chisel away and evaporate the outer shell of that ship However long it takes, I don't know. That will then get processed, as you can see here, into an SCU. You then get a crew member to yeet it down to the next deck, where you'll have another comrade who will then pick that up, move it, and stack it neatly, and that is your profit and how this system will work. Then, obviously, when you've got no more room, make your way to a selling point and get that lovely cash money alpha UEC. That then brings us to the salvage processing deck. This is located above the salvage hold. And the idea here is that you would collect your hull scrapes. It will then get processed into SEU crates. Once that has been completed, you are then free to manifest that into some sort of storage. So you would grab it via a tractor beam. And hopefully you have crew members, friends comrades underneath on the deck below willing to receive this as you throw it down this lift it then gets stacked neatly away and there's your profit stored um, so it's quite a nice little system it's very moody in here very atmospheric I like the sort of dim steamy lighting and the metal grates located in the in the floors there all adds to that sense of immersion you'll notice there's also like a gantry above which is a nice touch I think I'd have maybe an engineer or someone up here overseeing the process we've got all these chains and pulley systems which i hope do get implemented because i think that will also add to the sense of immersion um being able to move crates and su thing uh, crates around with cranes and pulley systems sounds quite immersive and fun um from a business point of view you really would get a feel that you're actually doing work and getting paid for that work and that is something i hope they implement because I think it'd be kind of interesting using cranes and pulley systems to manipulate cargo. That then brings us to the habitation deck and immediately you're greeted by damp, wet, steam and eeriness and it's awesome. How atmospheric is this area of the ship? It's really really cool. Underneath that we do get an engineering area of the ship um, have absolutely no idea what this is if you know guys let me know because I honestly have not got a clue what this is but it looks incredibly important moving back up to the habitation deck then we have two airlocks um, which are adjacent each other um, but just look at the steam and water falling from there you it's so creepy this ship it really does make you look behind and over your shoulders um, numerous times it's a very spooky ship I really enjoy it go through to the airlocks then we have airlock then a door then some storage I think that's for armor and maybe EVA suits I would assume so as they're so close to airlocks um, so we have two of those um, flanking each other we then have the captain's quarters and I really like the captain's quarters. I can't help but feel that Lieutenant Ripley would be really at home, sat on that chair, on that desk. Um, and then, obviously, events unfold. But as you can see, it's nicely lit. There is a giant window for the captain to look out of. Um, various seats. You can tell it's an Aegis ship with all of the sort of padding in and around the area. Um, it's got a nice empty shelf. I think 
I would probably put some flares and things that we can uh, have in our ships now. It would be nice if we could store some flares behind there and make it a little bit more homely because it is very industrial and cold in here. The captain will also get his own, his or her own um, sleeping quarters. Um, nothing too fancy. You wouldn't expect it to be. Uh, the captain will also get a bathroom shower combo. Um, so privacy. Uh, being captain, you will get that, which is a nice touch. A um, little bit of privacy for the captain is the only comfort, really, that the captain will receive on board the Reclaimer. So on board as captain of the Reclaimer, you will almost certainly be the one that is the most privileged with your own bedroom and bathroom area and your own privacy. Moving on to the crew quarters then, we can see we have a double bunk system. It's very dark and dingy in here. Um, steam beko in from the lower bed bunks is quite an atmospheric touch looks very cold um, your crew should not expect to be comfortable I think the design language of that sh of the ship points to that um, once you step on board you know exactly where you are you are on board a ship that is designed to be industrial and industrial only it does have its own ablutions with two showers on the left and the two toilets on the right both with doors that do function all of them have doors that function there is basic privacy here but I still like the attention to detail I wouldn't want to use shower number two because there's like this horrible pool of water on the floor which reminds me of a public swimming pool and you know what I'm talking about um, fairly disgusting in here um, but at least the crew will be able to get clean and wash all that scrap metal and God knows what else it might be that you've got yourself covered in um, very atmospheric industrial crew quarters in the reclaimer that then brings us to the galley and here you will find a dining table and your kitchenette area with a nice tv it's actually nice and roomy in here especially for four to five people it really does not feel cramped at all and i think if you're on journeys or voyages for a long time having an area this big is probably good for your mental health it's nicely lit again we've got the padding everywhere another window so light will enter this room so you won't be um, living like a vampire um, fairly spacious the seats look actually respectably comfortable and the kitchenette there in the background of various storage bins and all of that good stuff so no real complaints here um, it's functional and clean here we have a docking collar um, it's its own separate room with plenty of padding which makes sense and then we enter the area which is the tech deck um, again very sci-fi all the cables exposed um, paint coming off the pillars very very moody steam bellowing as usual we have some escape bots that don't actually work yet um, obviously they will have to in the future because should things go awry we're going to need an area in which we can get out this ship quickly being a big ship that's very important we have a server room where I imagine we'll be putting our blades and basic tools. Um, I think there's some storage in here, mm, or there's going to be. Don't treat that as gospel, not entirely sure. And then we have the dedicated drone room. As you can see, there's two operator seats here who will be remotely activating those surveying drones. So I'm looking forward to that. I think this will be a good aspect of this ship. I think a lot of people are quite excited by the promise that drones bring to the game. And the fact that we have a drone station on board of its own dedicated area is pretty special. Um, so as you can see, there's sort of like these clamps where I imagine they're going to hold the drones in place. I'm not entirely sure how this will operate, to be honest, but it's nice to know that we're going to have drones in the future. And I think salvaging drones is something that I look forward to because it sounds really cool and it will more than likely be a lot of fun to fly those drones I would have thought. Moving on then we arrive at the gravity generator and as you can see it's in full motion right now. I am a little bit surprised by just how small this gravity, ge uh, gravity generator is considering the size of this ship is absolutely gargantuan. I've seen bigger on the 890 jump um, so quite bizarre that we have a fairly small gravity generator here but nonetheless it does the job I'm not floating around so can't really complain 
Also on this deck, you will find the large munching capability of the Reclaimer. We don't have it yet, and we won't have it in 318, but it will be a future feature that the Reclaimer will have. And that will add an even more immersive and profitable game loop. I'm interested to see what visual effects and just how they intend to make um, munching operate within this ship and other ships in the future because surely this won't be the only ship to do so so i think if they nail it with this ship it will set a precedent for the, any future ship so something to keep an eye on for sure you can see here we have three monitors overlooking that process um, and a ship of this size don't forget with the power management relay systems coming into place an engineer on board is almost certainly going to be pivotal and here is one of the best areas of the ship in my humble opinion like the command center kind of um, this one pillar surrounded by four computers two of them are scanning suites and the other two have host SAS systems these are your remote turret entry points so you can remotely shoot down and defend yourself and also use the scanning suites suites to find anything useful that you might be able to turn into profit very cool in here I love the light and how the steam just sort of bellows in and around that center console don't like the cables on the floor trip hazard but I don't think they really care about health and safety that then brings us to the bridge uh, flight deck area of the ship nothing special here we have these huge steel pipes running right through the center of it, it really does just give that extra you are in an industrial ship do some work vibe here we have the tractor beam stations um, also this is where you will do the hole scraping via these two terminals um, located just behind the pilot seat and co-pilot seat well, I say just behind it's a fair distance but so this will be the main operation area for that particular gameplay loop then it brings us to the cockpit very weird looking cockpit it has to be said reminds me very much of a Heinkel triple one bomber um, from World War two pilot seat on the left as you can see well indicated by the writing below the seat looks fairly comfortable um, MFDs drop down from the top as you can see here and position themselves at your eye level so that's a pretty cool function but we'll cover that on the walk around and then we have the co-pilot seat obviously located just next to him there so that's the internals now let's get a sense of scale and here I am and it's windy as hell and look how puny I am as a human being this ship really is a monster anyway let's begin our walk around of the reclaimer okay guys here we are and straight away you'll notice the gargantuan claw located on the front it's going to be used to pin and hold in place the vessels that you are stripping and crunching we have those gigantic floodlights which are really super bright and they should be um, in the dark dark area of space you need to see what you're doing we have four gigantic VTOL landing gear so these landing gear are actually part of the engines as well they are VTOL and you will need them to get this ship out of atmosphere because it is horrific flying this weapon um, of destruction um, through atmosphere it is awful you get about 40 meters per second if you're lucky um, so it's very very stormy today and I I know I've turned the engines off but uh, I'm hoping that this thing is heavy enough that it doesn't move because that will cause issues we have these massive suspension arms it would seem from the front and rear legs attaching it directly to the hull you can see up there we've got one of the airlocks are left open and we have some maneuvering thrusters around the back here this rear area of the ship houses the lift as you just seen that um, go up into the hull. Uh, this back area is where you'll find the cargo hold, the salvage hold, salvage processing is all in this um, sort of abdomen of the ship. Um, it is absolutely massive this thing. I actually think it's a fairly respectable price point for real cash as well. For the amount of ship that you're getting for that is and potential future gameplay with the drones and the fact that it's only four to five crew in terms of star citizen it's pretty good value for money i will say that um, just for the sheer size of it and future potential i think we'll all agree so we'll make our way round back to the front um, 
as we are just very I'm very the ship's moving stop moving can you stop doing stop I mean we weigh like nine million kilograms or whatever can what stop stop where are you going reclaimer <laughs> I need to um okay this is this is not what I was expecting um please don't roll over please don't roll over stay don't you do it I need to um it's still going how freaking windy is it please just stop stop it would appear I need to go reclaim my reclaimer because even a ship as big and heavy as this is no match for mother nature and I need to get in there pronto please stop moving I demand that you halt halt is it stopped you see a belly turret there stop please stop this is not how I normally do things this is completely unnecessary oh my god it's still moving can you please just relax relax thank god I haven't got the engines on because I get the feeling this thing right let's get inside before bad things happen this is gonna be extremely dangerous oh no oh no oh no come on if I get inside I'm safe I'm scared to death I'm gonna get trampled by oh look at it look it just doesn't stop oh it's going into a no 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 stop please stop please yeah okay well if you ever wanted to know how to drift a reclaimer this is how you do it is it I think it's wedged I think it's wedged quick get get on board like right now immediately get on right now the the lift is submerged in gravel quick just right well there was my exciting outside walk around of the Aegis Reclaimer let's get the hell in this ship and we'll kick things off by of course going to the cargo hold where it's nice and safe and I'm not gonna get crushed by this <laughs> ridiculously sized ship okay well it looks like we've made it and uh, well that was certainly exciting I never ever want to experience that again I did not want to get crushed by the landing gear because you know I'm already quite dehydrated any who's cargo room then so here we will have um, all of our cargo stored in the future and again I think I would probably use this for logistics and there's various panels and wiring and things in here of no important consequence I don't think um, 180 SCU plenty of room for your cargo um, I'm not sure how long you could stay out on a voyage again we have the pulley systems here as well so that's a nice touch again I really do wish that we can do stuff with the pulleys um, that would be awesome right so let's now we're in the ship and safe and I don't really care what's happening outside because I don't want to look we'll go to the next area which is the salvage hold it will be interesting to see just where CIG are going to implement the various engineering stations and relay systems on board the reclaimer um, getting in and around to treat um, ship maintenance or any wounds that you've received in battle um, it's gonna be interesting to navigate this ship and fix all of those things so this is the salvage hold um, much larger um, where at least the, the perception is much larger than the cargo hold um, again plenty of steam I could see xenomorphs running in on the ceiling around here couldn't you almost certainly and there is a, a drop down area for the various SEU of the ship um, so nothing extraordinary in here it serves a purpose it's industrial um, but it does look bigger than the cargo hold itself so we'll make our way back down past all of these open pipes the steam the liquid the damp the moistness the scariness the xenomorphs 
running around on the ceiling and head back to the elevator and then make our way to the next area of this ship. So straight back to this panel and we'll go to the salvage processing. And up we go. Not the fastest of lifts but it does the job. Nice animations with the door. So this uh, really is the money making area of the ship for the salvage. And it's just so cool in here. I can see people working here. I can see you and your friends, crew members, whoever it might be, all cooperating, trying to get that money. And then when it's processed, like I showed you earlier, you'll be dropping that down below with your tractor beam. And someone should be stacking it into night. Nice tidy piles, very similar to what you do in Jump Town. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how this all unfolds. And this really is a massive area of the ship. There's a hell of a lot of space here. Tons and tons of space. Um, imagine drug running with a reclaimer. It'd be quite interesting, wouldn't it? It's take quite a while for the authorities to search this ship. That, that's for sure. So we'll head back out. Back to the lift. And then we'll make our way to the salvage balcony before we hit the habitation deck. So this will take us to sort of like the uh, the gantry above the salvage processing area. Doors open. Here we are. Let's go have a look. So this is really for someone that doesn't oversee what's going on or maybe there's problems that you're having shifting the salvaged um, material. Um, it's just a walkway with various cranes and pulleys. I don't see any special use for this area of the ship other than observation and supervision. Um, they might add relays and things up here which would kind of make sense. Uh, so this could be a key area to get to in the future. Again we'll just have to wait and see um, what trajectory they d decide to go down with this particular area. Maybe it'll just remain the same. Who knows? But just something I thought I'd show because there's two aspects to this um, salvage processing area of the ship. So we'll make our way back into the elevator, back to the panel, and then we'll head to the salvation, uh, salvation habitation deck and have a good old look around there. So this will be the last area of the ship that we have a good look around and predominantly where you're going to spend most of your time. I think looking for the stuff to salvage will be a longer process than actually um, acquiring that. So habitation will make our way down to this sub deck down this ladder here. This takes us to an engineering room. Down we go. And we have... I literally have no idea what this is but there is a small um, component here I want to say I have absolutely no idea what it is but it looks important it's here for a reason engineering room maybe there are going to be relays put here who knows um, but love that orange ominous glow uh, and that's all it is for this room really there's not a lot here there's some component panels here I believe um, so a lot to learn when this ship goes through the gold pass and they implement the future features maybe some areas the ship will get reworked there's nothing behind that ladder so we'll head back up like so and that brings us to the two airlocks so we'll go to the left one open this door and here we have armor and undersuit storage, I think, for EVAing. We have the door I left open earlier. And at least it's no longer stormy, so we're not moving. That's a relief. That was terrifying. Not only is this ship scary inside, but it also tries to kill you on the outside. So we'll head back through. And the airlock is basically symmetrical on the other side as well. So, same thing here. Another door. The other door left open. Let's shut that. 
Look how high up we are. 50 meters tall, this ship. Almost certainly you will plummet to your death if you try jumping out um, from there. I haven't tried it, I don't want to, and you can't make me. So we'll head down this corridor, lots of padding again. On the left we have the crew quarters and on the right is the captain's quarters. So we'll go in here first. This is where Lieutenant Ripley will do all of her paperwork. Um, her own little kitchenette here, which is really cool. Um, again, just the basic shelf, a TV I think. Um, the desk has this inbuilt... Um, I'm going to say multi-function display. I think that would be for mission planning. I would hope so. We have some lockers. And then we move... Well, don't forget this um, giant window. So that at least there is light. Some sort of light entering these um, crew quarters and captain quarters. Here we have the personal sleeping area for the captain. And ensuite bathroom with toilet, sink and shower. Easily the cleanest toilet, sink and shower on board this ship bed has its own TV or instrument panel whatever it might be it's a shame it's facing the wrong way personal wardrobe nice touch I like the captain's quarters it's by far and away the most private area of the ship and then we'll make our way to the crew quarters which is located directly opposite storage lockers more padding giant window not a giant window a window with a giant engine that you can see which is nice and then we head into the ablution area which again look it's just disgusting in here i don't know who's living like that but if i'm captain with this ship and you live like a slob you're getting thrown head first out of that airlock it's no excuses two showers on the left and then the two toilets here semi-private toilet seats down on this one yeah, very disgusting in here. Public swimming pool vibe. Pools of water on the floor. Don't live like a slob. Like I said, I will throw you out that airlock and be done with you. No questions asked. That, that's no need for that poor hygiene on board a ship, especially if you're out for months um, trying to earn a living. Here we have basic bunks. Don't look particularly comfortable. There are some screens on the end of the beds. Each crew member will receive their own personal storage bin which will be useful, obviously. Um, yeah, very dense, cold, atmospheric vibe I get in here. Creepy, very eerie. So we'll head back out, and then we'll take the right, RC1, RC2. We'll take the left, sorry. Still get lost. Here is the galley eating area. We'll just nip into this room here. This is um, where the docking collar is located, so right next to the kitchenette area and where your crew and yourself are going to come eat your meals well the captain necessarily doesn't need to because the captain has all of the uh, cooking facilities in the office which is nice but the crew will almost certainly come here fix your meals various storage bins as you can see coffee and miscellaneous top left nice little labeling going on there so there's no confusion another window again it's very important to let the natural light in at some point and then we have this table that looks fairly respectable. Seats look comfortable. There is obviously a TV screen there so your crew can chill out. Let's have a little seat. Yeah, not too bad. I can see uh, stories being told here while you're eating while the TV's on. Now, uh, if you could just pass me the salt, that'd be great. Um, yeah, very roomy for four to five people. Um, doesn't feel claustrophobic at all, um, which is important. Because I imagine, like I said, I think you're going to be spending a lot of time searching for those profits. And even with the drones and the big verse that we're going to have, finding them could be quite tricky. So we make our way to the technical deck. Here we have like a server room. I'm assuming um, this is where the blades and things are going to go for the turrets, um, which would be nice. Although, if I have an NPC crew, I would more than likely want the NPC crew stationed in um, the turrets. There's a really annoying glitch. That's very buggy. Quite annoying. Does look like you're going to be transported to the nether realm. Fortunately, it's just a little bug. Um, it is what it is. It's unfortunate. It's okay. Here we have the escape pods. Don't work at the moment. 
um, but they will have a important future again. And there's the Shadow Realm. We're just going to walk through the Shadow Realm. There we go. We haven't been abolished to another realm. We'll make our way through. Plenty of padding. There's the gravity gravity generator at the back there doing its thing, keeping me pinned to the deck. And then we'll enter this drone room. So we have the two drone operator seats here. Various MFDs and screens which you're going to use to drive and pilot those drones and salvage bits of material, I would have thought, or do, do recons with. Who knows how it's going to work, but it will be exciting to find out. We have the drone bay here. And I think there's sort of like these arms look like collars or something that hold the drones in place. And on the ceiling, there's no real telltale signs of how it might work. We just have to sort of guesstimate. Um, so I imagine those pincers hold the drone and then it drops through the ship. I just don't know. It will be exciting to find out. Let's make our way back out then. So what we'll do, uh, actually before we go to the bridge, we'll go to the gravity generator room, which is just here. As you can see, I still don't think that's big enough. We'll quickly go down this ladder um, just to show you there's another access point to different areas of the ship. This will take us to the central sort of command suite, if you like, with the two remote turrets and the scanning suite. Engineers will need to know this route because um, it's going to save you time. Should something malfunction or you have a fault that needs immediate repairing, then at least you know your way around. So that brings us down to this very cool central control column. Um, but we'll get back to this, so we'll head back up this ladder and then what we'll do is head to one of the turret rooms um, the top turret which is equipped with two size 5 Galdarines so we'll go up here real quick like so okay let's make our way to the turret room which is located directly opposite the drone room it has its own ladder so we'll quickly climb up this and there's nothing special in this room. It is purely for turret access. Um, big C2 components and C1, I think they might have components in. No idea what for. And we'll hop in this turret. Like so. That will bring us up. And this is a very thick, steel, ironclad turret. You really do feel quite safe and secure in this thing. It is just feels ridiculously heavy almost like a tank in some respect another turret located way at the back there but again you can see we have the two five uh, two size five galderines that put out a substantial amount of dps three mfds um central one being the radar visibility isn't the best um to be honest but you know what i feel safe and secure in this very well protected turret it doesn't irritate me as much as, as it would on some other vessels that we have in and around the verse so let's hop out and then make our way back down this ladder again this is going to be important to know where these turrets are um, some of them are remote which is a bit nicer you don't have to expose your crew members very cool very mystic. We'll head into the bridge area now, and to do that, we need to take an elevator down. Like so. And that brings us to this central column, and again, this is my favourite area of the ship. Very cool, steamy. So we have the scanning station here, followed by a remote turret station here. And when you get on, it doesn't work. There's no buttons, I don't think. So this will... Oh, hang on. Three options and an exit. I can't see... Oh, power on. Let's see. No. So it doesn't work at the moment, which is a bit unfortunate. I'm sure that will all get remedied and employed when they go through the gold pass for this thing. Um, and with 318 on the way, I can't see that being too long, if I'm honest. Hopefully not, anyway. Um, and we have the other remote turret on the other side and you'd stand here and use the HOSAS system to um, aim and protect your ship and all of your hard earned profit yeah same thing here okay 
Let's make our way through. Here, we just have a random elevator that takes us down to the outside. We don't want to do that just yet. There's another ladder. Slide for access. This doesn't open at the moment. Uh, two more escape pods. And then we come to the bridge area. The crunching area was behind us. This is where we're going to operate the scraping aspect of the ship. It's also the tractor beam station. So quite an important space um, for you to be in. I look forward to uh, trying this in 318 um, along with the vulture. It's going to be very unique and interesting. So there's one seat. Tractor beam. And we have the other one here. Tractor beam operator seat. But it will again be the whole scraping as well. And that brings us to the front of the ship. Where we have enter the claw operator seat. So that you're going to be responsible if this is your job role. To operate that giant claw and hold the vessels you are scraping and salvaging. And keeping those big chunks of metal in place. While your two teammates behind you can um, use that station to scrape the holes and make that money so that's cool and two mfds just sort of swing in your face mounted on two arms there and then finally we have the pilot seat just here again it does remind me this cockpit very much of the heinkel bomber from world war ii we have oh we've sustained damage because of the wind but we have the three mfds um some control panels and buttons above us Visibility isn't brilliant, um, it's enough to navigate as long as you get the job done, but you can actually see where the floor is as well, so that's important, landing a ship of this size. Just three MFDs, basic stuff, all accounted for, but overall an excellent, excellent ship with tons of future um, potential. So there we go guys, that was my video on the Mighty Reclaimer. What do you guys think about this ship? guys? If you did enjoy this video, you know what buttons to press and I will have more Star Citizen content en route to your location soon. Cheers.